seen, I've seen Matty Tingles do this a couple of years ago and I thought it would be quite fun to do this myself and the Ace Mark Hammer did a sort of similar video as well uh, so I wanted to give it a go so I've listed 10 of I just said of my favourite films, songs, my own personal videos and video games uh, I'm just going to go through them all categorically you can see I've got some space here so um, I can actually put like the posters of films, the artwork for albums just you know to add a little bit of bit of extra spice to this video and more enjoyment so without further ado let's just get into celebrating my top 10s of 2022 so up first we have movies now movies is quite uh, an interesting one because there's been a lot of good movies this year but a lot of those good movies I am actually yet to see uh, partly because I just haven't gone to the cinema and they're not available to rent just yet and um, partly because uh, distribution reasons like a lot of the time the films coming out in America recently haven't been coming out in like the UK and the rest of the world like until months after the initial US release which is incredibly 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 annoying so uh, before we do get to the top 10 I'm just gonna uh, give some uh, films a mention that I haven't watched yet but I really want to and I could imagine could possibly break somewhere in the top 10 so first up is Bones and All the Come On Of Age cannibalist movie featuring the Timothy Chalamet after Sun um, featuring I cannot remember his name but he was in Normal People and Normal People is one of the best TV shows I've seen top three for sure uh, The Whale uh, featuring Brendan Fraser about the uh, obese English teacher trying to uh, reconnect with his daughter uh, apparently it's really heartfelt the menu now that actually does come out on Disney Plus here in the UK on like the 6th of January so I've only got like a week left to watch that so uh, I'm fortunate that I couldn't watch it before the end of 2022 uh, Pearl, I have seen X but I really want to see Pearl as well again that movie doesn't come out till March in the UK which is just obscene uh, Tar about the uh, conductor and composer Tar, it might be Emily Tar, but I could be Featuring Kate Blanchett, who is basically the frontlining runner for Best Actress of the Year, without a doubt. The Northman. Now, I've been meaning to watch The Northman for ages because it is on streaming, but I just haven't got around to it yet. But it looks phenomenal. Uh, bodies, Bodies, Bodies is another one that I really, really, really wanted to watch for a really long time. Just haven't got around to watching it yet. Uh, Avatar Way of the Water. Now, this just looks like such. South Korean film Broker and Marcel the Shell with shoes on. So those are the films that I haven't been able to watch yet that I think could have possibly broken the top ten if I had watched them. But anyways, without that out of the way, let's actually get into the top ten. With at tenth place we have Triangle of Sadness. Now I never knew anything about this film until I went to see Don't Worry Darling and there was a trailer for, uh, for Triangle of Sadness and Bella I think wow this looks really good, really good and then everyone started throwing up everywhere and we, well Bella has a, a fell out fear of sick, I don't think I have a fear of sick but like, okay no Bella has a phobia of sick, there we are that's better, I also just have a fear like an outright phobia but like I really just I strongly dislike sick so it really put me off the film for the longest time so I thought okay I won't see it in cinemas I'll just watch it when it comes out for rent so I can watch it <laughs> in my own home just in case I don't like the sick however it is completely fine the sick segment is only for like 15 minutes and it's, it's really it's easy to sit through I think <laughs> it is quite funny um, essentially if you don't know anything about drugs and it's about it's about rich people going on this really nice private yacht um, and it, it, uh, one night's really stormy uh, and everyone just starts throwing up everywhere uh, it's, it's gross it's disgusting um, but yeah it's drug with sadness this I think I wanted to like this movie more than I did like the first half of this film is 
is absolute cinema perfection for me. I was eating everything. I was I was eating it all up. I was absolutely loving it. And then we get to around the second half, which is the third act. But the third act is pretty much like half the half the movie. It is like you've eaten everything, and you're just left with your plate. But they don't fill your plate up again. There's nothing to chew from in the second half, in my opinion. But um, it's not like I was bored. I just wanted more of what we got in the first half to to sort of show itself in the second half again. It just felt so repetitive in nature. It, it, it just felt so confused with what to actually do with itself in the third act. And the ending is an open end ending, uh, which is okay, I think, for this movie. But um, yeah, definitely could have been higher if the second half of the film was just as good as the first half. Uh, and ninth, we have X, 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 which is the latest horror, well, actually not very really the latest, uh, one of the latest horrors from the West. There's actually a trilogy of these films with X, Pearl, and Maxine. Uh, Maxine comes out next year, and Pearl's already out in the US, but anyways, X, it was a very hyped and talk about horror slasher film. The biggest into slashers, really, uh, and I thought this was a pretty okay entry. Um, I I don't think I liked it as much as most people, but it is ninth, so I still did like it. Um, it was just a good glass watch, really. I don't really know anything else to add with it, but X at ninth, yeah. At eighth, we have the Batman, the Batman, the Batman, the Batman, the Batman. Now this was such a good watch. I absolutely love the stylistic and artistic choices they went to take with this route for Batman. I've never actually seen Nolan's Batman trilogy. I know blasphemy. Um, I, I loved this rendition and I'm not the biggest DC fan but seeing all the trailers for the film just made me want to be a DC fan and I'd rather much see DC take the route with with this sort of universe, cinematic universe with the Batman and what they're doing right now because it's easily, it's easy to say that the Batman is the best DC movie ever. Um, yeah, it, it's not like perfection, it has some flaws like pacing issues, maybe it does come off a little bit too much longer time than what actually needs to, like it's quite a lengthy, uh, heavy film. Um, so maybe yeah, it does run its course for too long. But uh, I enjoyed every second of it and cannot wait to see the spin-off or spin-off series with the penguin with Corin Colin Farrell. Uh Colin Farrell was my favourite performance in that film. He you couldn't even tell it was him. It was just that good. Uh, in my opinion he should get some sort of like best supporting actor award because it was so good to be at the Batman at eighth. At seventh is a much more independent kind of only really British movie. And that is a film called Brian and Charles. It's about a lonely inventor whose inventions don't really work. Um, he's he's uh, in an uh, isolated countryside, a village in Wales, and he doesn't have much people around him. So he decides to build a robot, a robot, a robot who came to life. And he named Charles. Charles. And relationship and sort of a father and son a bonding upbringing um, yeah it's just a good movie I think that explores the ideas of you know loneliness depression um, angst of growing up fatherhood parenthood it's just I don't know I think one of the more so underrated films of this year and it's so heartfelt and just yeah it, it gives you a warm feeling inside and I will admit though the sort of villain story arc line with this film is pretty weak. The ending is like a final showdown sort of thing that comes out of nowhere, which I just, I don't really feel like it felt like, I don't felt like it fit into the movie. Um, but everything else leading up to that point is fantastic, so I really do recommend Brian and Charles. Um, and again, I say it's more of a British movie because I don't think this was really, I don't think it's really gone in countries outside of the UK. So if you haven't heard of it, Brian and Charles, I definitely recommend it. Okay, 
release takes place quite a recent a recent film and that is Glass Onion a knives out mystery or is it story I think it's mystery um, one of my more so hyped films but this year because I absolutely loved the first knives out one of probably the best written mystery film I have ever ever seen um, did Glass Onion live up to the hype kind of yeah yeah I, I would say it did it definitely I think for me I keep on comparing it to the first one and I need to stop doing that just because the first one is pretty much in its own league and I don't think Glass Onion kind of reaches the peak of the original Knives Out but it's still very very good and they don't sort of rehash the same sort of structure it's you know it's its own thing which I do really appreciate though it does seem like Ryan Johnson is able to write multiple compelling and thought-provoking mysteries and stories and this one definitely does lean in like I've, I've seen many people say this it leans more so into the sort of silliness and goofiness of all of these murder mysteries um <laughs> like the like some of the motivations uh, in like you know classic uh, murder mysteries are all just sort of like like what why are you doing this and it kind of leads into that idea i won't spoil it but um yeah it's definitely more so goofy <laughs> but it's good good goofy uh, so yeah definitely do recommend class on it and that is on netflix so pretty pretty much widely available okay so from here on out are films that i think are pretty much almost perfect they're like pretty much four and a half out of five for me and i think yeah definitely some of the best films that i've seen this year so fifth place is decisions to leave which is the latest absolute hit from park chand work the likes who did old boy the handmaiden lady vengeance and sympathy for mr vengeance um and yeah decisions to leave is just a Another hit from him. I don't. I. I don't think is you know as good as the likes of Handmaiden or Old Boy, but still so so good. Um, it's a good. I would say blend of. You got some comedy hits in there. You got some drama. You got tension. You got heartfelt. It, it has. I think it's just such a well written drama that doesn't bore itself. It keeps you interested. It keeps you on your toes. These characters and the dynamics between all of them just work and fit so well together um, and you have these metaphorical images of you know the mountains and the sea there's a good video by I cannot remember his name but he did like a video essay on what the mountains and the sea mean in contrast and comparison to each other in decisions to leave it's a very good video so if you do like find it watch it um, so yeah decisions to leave uh, brilliant 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 film recommended that one um, it's kind of hard to watch though, it's only on like certain streaming services, so um, you might have to pay a little bit more to get it. Okay, fourth place we have... Nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Again, this was one of my more so anticipated films for this year. Kind of surprisingly because I haven't actually seen uh, any of his previous two films. I've not seen Us and I've not seen Get Out. Um, it seems like everyone's seen Get Out. I just haven't yet. I don't know why I haven't because it looks really good. But the problem is I feel like I've lived it so long now. I've seen pretty much and heard every pretty much everything that goes on with that movie. So unfortunately I can't be hit with that impact and that twist more so. But I still think it could be a good watch. Anyways, but nope. Such a good spaghetti western horror <laughs> it is it is pretty much a western horror not it in typical western fashion but it, it borrows elements and themes and ideas from westerns which um yeah it's, it's pretty cool you don't it, it so nope definitely makes itself stand out from the rest and i know a lot of people i've seen a lot of people saying they were disappointed with this film and i think they were expecting a lot more like visuals to come with the horror you do have that one part where people being sucked into the, the UFO but I think people expected more of that but I, again they I think that's coming into the film with the wrong ideas and the wrong impressions because yeah maybe that's the film was marketed as that but the film 
itself is, you know, everyone knows what the film's about. It's about spectacle. Yeah, it's about billing video essays on what nope means. Um, but yeah, it's rightfully all this recognition. It deserves it all. Such a good horror. Like this year has been a really good year for horror and thrillers. It, yeah, really good year actually. So yeah, fourth place is nope. In third place, we have Banshees of Inner Sharon. Inner Sharon. Inner Sharon. Banshees of Inner Sharon. And now I absolutely. Love Martin. I'm gonna put his last name Mar Martin McDowell. Mc like he's Irish. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he's done films. Uh, he's done Seven Psychopaths. He's done In Rouge, and he's done three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Um, he he's easily top three director for me. Easily, uh, I think he makes the best comedy movies out there. His writing style is so good. His storytelling and and the way he, he like kind of just throws you into these worlds, there's no waiting around. He's like, okay, well this has already happened. Now you've been thrown into it. Enjoy the film. It's just you get straight into things, and I absolutely love it. He just doesn't wait around with his writing style. And Benji's finish Sharon is just such a witty comedy about two friends who are just no longer friends and Colin Farrell's character just cannot seem to cope and deal with that. He needs to know why they aren't friends anymore. And it sort of speaks of it's well it's set during the civil war going on in Ireland. You know, so it's it has that metaphorical connection of war and inner, you know, conflict between two of you know a civil a civil conflict, you know, because they're two best friends and now one of them doesn't want to be friends with them anymore. And it's a very simple premise, but it's so unique. Uh, the characters, everyone gives absolutely phenomenal performances, and it definitely seems like it will sweep a lot of the award ceremonies this year. So, Banshees of Inner Sharon um, is on Disney Plus in quite a few countries, so give it a watch. Number two, probably I think the biggest surprise for me this year is Barbarian. This film is horror films I have ever seen and I didn't know about this film literally until it just came out uh, but I never got a chance to see it in the cinema but it recently released on Disney Plus out of all <laughs> streaming platforms so I could finally watch it and it is so 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 good um, it's, it's like I appreciate it when horrors can actually be smart because a lot of time horrors you see are just mind numbing they don't explore any themes or ideas but Barbarian really hones on in, in its ideology um, of, of, of uh, sexual assault um, you know the way women are treated and the rabbit hole of this whole you know I, in my opinion it's all related closely to the Epstein rabbit hole ideas too much about spoiling stories so that may seem weird first of all me just saying all of that but it, it kind of all links closely with 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 what i've just said um basically let me explain the premise of barbarian so essentially uh, two people that booked out an airbnb on the same night uh, accidentally so they just try and you know live together throughout the night um you know they start getting along with each other until one of them find a mystery within the basement of the house and the story just kind of unfolded from there um i've seen a lot of people say how it kind of got silly and goofy towards the end but i loved i loved it i loved that i thought it just worked so well um I, just, I don't know, I just think everything, everything about Barbarian works and I just cannot wait to see more of what the director brings, I can't remember his name but I think this is like his first proper like full length feature film debut so fantastic debut and you know things can, I reckon can only get better from here on out so Barbarian second place but yes, first place we have everything, everywhere once, um, I don't think this comes as a surprise to a lot of people. A lot of people do have this as their number one film, and rightfully so. It is just.
just everything I think anyone could ask from a film. It's just so mind-blowingly creative. It makes you think a lot about yourself and life and others around you. Um, like it kind of reminds me, it, like the same response from this film kind of reminds me of the same response people will say about Ikaru, about the uh, man who finds out he has cancer and so you know he has the last remaining few days to do something with his life and it seems like that film and this film, everything ever all at once kind of have the same reflection and response on the people about living their life, be with the people, you know, it's, 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 it's such a thought-provoking film then it has some of the best action sequences I've ever seen, some of the most crazy visuals, um, brilliant cinematography, amazing performances. I, if everyone deserves, and Michelle Yeoh deserves um, a Best Actress nomination, oh, I can't remember. He plays Wayman, but he, he's in the Goonies. He 100% deserves Best Supporting Actor. He yet deserves to get nominated, but deserves to win it. And the, I can't remember who plays their daughter, but she deserves Best Supporting Actress. She is phenomenal in this film. Uh, oh, it's glimmer back, but yeah, everything, ever all at once. Please do yourself a favour if you're going to watch any other film from this year, or if you're going to watch a film for your next film, make it everything everywhere all at once. I've, I've rarely seen anyone say they dislike this film. Sure, people say it's overrated, but I've never seen anyone really say how they dislike this film. Apart from my mum, my mum didn't like it. <laughs> but yeah, everything everywhere all at once. I cannot rate this film highly enough. I think this could easily be my favourite film of all. You know, just watch it a few more times, let it marinate, <laughs> walk it off. So, yeah, it easily could be my favourite film ever. So, well, that was a long, long segment. So, we'll try to get through the rest of these fairly quickly. So, up next, we have songs. I was going to do albums, but then I realised I haven't actually listened to 10 new albums from 2022. Oh, yeah, I don't think I actually said everything listed in these lists had to be released in 2022 just to make that clear um so yeah i'd say we just start from 10 and make ourselves way to one and i do have some audible mentions that i'll list before we do say what number one is so number 10 we have fmg by brock hampton now brock hampton's last two albums were ass they were not good one of them was kind of like a joke album, not like a joke album, but like a psych out album, where they were hyped up to be the album, but then only starred Kevin on it, and then they released the actual one at midnight that same day. I don't get it. It was a weird release. The actual album just felt ugh, bad. There were like two good songs, like FMG and New Shoes. FMG just felt like old, good quality Brockhampton. It kind of reminded me of a song that could be on Iridescence, which is my favourite Brockhampton album. So yeah, there we are. FMG, Brockhampton, and maybe this one only released quite recently. So I've only had the same time with this song as I have with like pretty much all the other songs. So if it released earlier in the year, then it probably could be a little bit higher on the list. At number nine, we have Ride the Dragon by FKA Twigs. Now this is actually the only FKA Twig songs I've actually listened to. Well, I've tried to listen to other songs, but they're just not my sort of jam and vibe. But Ride the Dragon is just such a fun, poppy, um, R&B tune. It's so catchy. It's really beautiful to listen to, and the beat is just so infectious, in my opinion. Um, I think it is the opening song on her recent album, Capri Songs. Um, but yeah, Ride the Dragon, really Really, really good tune. Uh, in at number eight is Cash In and Cash Out by Pharrell Williams featuring 21 Savage and Tyler the Creator. Um, now, this was a surprise hit for me this year. Um, I mean, it's known Pharrell Williams, one of the best producers out there, in my opinion. I think he's probably top three producers, in my opinion. Um, yeah, he just managed to make it up there. Cash in, cash out. Such a funky beat. Um, and then 21 Savage, he comes. 
comes in balls through like I, I'm not typically the biggest 21 uh, listener but recently a lot of his features I've been absolutely loving like on surround sound on Jid's album 21 absolutely pops off on there and yeah he's great in cash in cash out but my standout on this track is Tyler the Creator um, the track definitely becomes a lot more explosive a lot more ad libs it kind of fits more on Tyler's like vibe with his tracks as well so for hours kind of tuned the track to both 21 and Tyler individually but it works and flows so seamlessly together and so yeah I love Tyler's explosive second half it's so good and of course 21's catchy um, chorus it's a chorus whatever I don't know of cash and cash out cash and cash out just repeating that it's so good uh, up next we have come on let's go by Nico so Tyler with his second song on the list um, and this is such a funny weird song it's about Tyler who's waiting for his girlfriend to get finished getting ready so they can go out presumably to go out for dinner um, he talks about how he's waiting and how he's having to talk to the neighbour whilst you know she's still getting ready you know uh, the traffic's picking up on the highway so they're going to be even more late that kind of reminds me has the same sort of vibe as Escape of the Pina Colada song where it's kind of like a comedy song about such like an obscure scene and moment in time about this character's life it kind of has the same sort of vibe but um, yeah the, 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 the actual music itself is really good really catchy flows really nicely um, again the storytelling really good so yeah Come On Let's Go by Nico Beach and Tyler really good in Aesthetic sixth place we have doja by snot featuring asap rocky okay not to be confused by the song doja by central c i think it is um <laughs> completely different songs uh, but they just both talk about doja and wanting to do certain things to her <laughs> oh my cat's down there i didn't even notice anyways i don't know what is it something something about this song makes me feral it, it, it just you know when the songs they, they, they just get you hyped they get you yeah. and something about this song bro it just wakens something up inside of me um because it's, it's kind of like a fast paced aggressive it's loud it's in your face sort of song um both snob be given amazing performance asap rocky always delivering on features as i'm about asap rocky if he's got a feature you know it's going to be an absolute banger um so i've never i tried listening to rest of snot's album it wasn't for me but doja really stuck out and i've been absolutely jamming to it ever since and now cynthia is on my lap so that's good uh up next in fifth place is song compared to everything else that I've listed in this video and that is Godric the Grafted um, by Elden Ring <laughs> I don't actually know he was a composer for the Elden Ring soundtrack but it is a song from Elden Ring and my god this song is so chaotic menacing fearsome it's 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 everything I could ask for a Souls like soundtrack. Um, uh, if you don't know anything about Dark Souls or Elder Ring, they're, they're known for their compositions, their musical compositions during boss battles um, to sort of help um, elevate, you know, the, the fear factor, the tension, the awesomeness and epicness of these battles. And Godric the Grafted, I think, does it best in Elder Ring. And I've been listening to it ever since it came out and it's actually the soul song that made me buy the Elden Ring like collector's vinyl <laughs> um but yeah it's just is it, the character himself Godric is this crazed uh, maniac he's lost his mind basically and the song showcases that so well it's kind of all over the place it's crazy um you know you've got like these violins these screeching violins that kind of like they're sort of like they're screaming sort of like what godric does it's just yeah it just amps up everything to the max um in the battle in the song and it's a great listen to when you're walking down the street so yeah godric the crafted quality quality song uh up next fourth place we have die hard by kendrick Um, but yeah, this song, one of my favourites from um, around the Big Steppers, really, I'm pretty sure I could have a lot 
lot more songs on this top 10 featuring songs just from his latest album alone but I thought I'd kind of reduce it just to like my two favourite songs um, Die Hard such a good flowing melodies the beat is so good I don't know it's like it's one more of his catchy sort of tunes it's like a sort of thing you don't really see much of Kendrick Kendrick is a known for having catchy songs like the ones that come to mind first for being catchy love love is a catchy song like I'm gonna be a bit like that that's catchy but yeah I think Die Hard sort of fits into that same sort of mm. catchiness that you don't really get a lot with Kendrick and I think it just works really well uh, yeah Die Hard I thought I'd ever to say about the song I just really really like it and seeing the song live was so good one of my highlights from um, the performance um, it's really cool because he has some dancers um, holding on to the back of him that they're, 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 they're dancing is so infectious to watch and yeah Trent and Die Hard it was my favourite to watch him just move it was so weird <laughs> to see how they were moving but yeah it was great dancing great dancing okay at third place we have Stars by Jid um, I did not expect to like this song as much as I did it was a um uh, uh, how do I explain it so it starts out with like the first 50 or so seconds just being pure like music like just a beat sort of a, a weird buzzing like I don't know how to explain it it's like a weird beat uh, and then uh, Jitter comes in with a um like a, a an effect on his voice it's not his actual voice it's a, a bitch changer I think but I love how it sounds like it I've heard a lot of people say they don't like how this song sounds but I kind of like how sort of it sounds like it shouldn't fit together but it does <laughs> I don't know how to explain the song too well and then it kind of evolves into more just a typical jid um, expression saying you know hanging around the stars you know some of these stars aren't really what I made them out to be it just talks about you know rap culture and you know the stars within it and how he's kind of one of these stars now it's a good song a good song uh second place this was close to be my first pick actually and that is savior by kendrick lamar savior what a song and it really does encapsulate everything that mr around the big steppers sort of stands for you know kendrick's been feeling this pressure he's been wanting to hide away from from the pressure from us from the people from everyone else around him he's seen as the savior for so many people but he doesn't want to be the savior for people he, he doesn't want that pressure and he's you know in the song he says bron isn't your f f uh, 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 your savior goal isn't your savior j cole um uh, you know baby keem he's not your savior savior and uh, yeah it just kind of goes into saying how we shouldn't really rely on these artists and celebrities to be our saviors you know our saviors should be ourselves uh, and i think it's such an interesting and real and true take on celebrities and idolization and whatnot um and yeah i think everything he says is completely true really a uh, great song amazing song and the beat and everything else everyone like baby game i love his verse and chorus so good so yeah savior so close to being first however first place goes to radar by jid the first time i heard this song i i knew it was a 10 out of 10 june it was actually the first jid song i've i've ever listened to i thought i'd give it a listen because it was recommended to me on my spotify and i never listened to it before i cannot believe it as soon as i heard the first few seconds of radar i knew i was gonna absolutely love the rest of this album radar such an energetic upbeat really fast-paced intro to an album that i, I don't I, I, I don't think i can put into words how good this song is without kind of doing it an injustice essentially radar the best song i've heard this year and if you're a massive fan of hip-hop rap do yourself a favor listen to this song you will not be disappointed oh my god i didn't list my um my honorable mentions anyway so honorable mentions should have listed them before first but 
amazing things about it. I haven't heard good things about it, so I'll probably pick it up when it's on sale. And yeah, that is the quarry. In fifth place, we have a fun indie game called Junic, and this is a blend of original uh, Zelda styled games mixed with. It's, it's, it's cringe to say Souls like, but it really does feel like Zelda and Souls put together. I know it's very common place to call everything Souls like, the difficulty of Souls, but it really is. Um, I can get unfortunate with Tunic, and I haven't actually finished this game. I really want to. I think I, I dropped it because uh, another game came out, or I went back to Elden Ring, I can't remember, and I just, I've just never gone back to it. But I really want to because what I did play of it was absolutely phenomenal. I honestly think it should have won Best Independent Game over Strain. Uh, I've never played Strain, but uh, that's how much I do love Tunic, and I think it was absolutely robbed, 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 robbed of um, Best Independent Game. Uh, up next, we have Pokemon Scarlet in fourth, and yes, I can admit the game is 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 a bad game. It shouldn't be this high on the list because it is a bad, it's a badly made game. But there's something about the Pokemon formula which I just cannot get enough of. And I know it, we shouldn't be excusing it, and I don't want to excuse it, but it, just because the Pokemon formula doesn't work so well, it seems excusable. But it shouldn't be. But yeah, I honestly had so much fun playing Pokemon Scarlet, and if I had fun, then hey, I think it's a good game. Actually, I did go Scarlet. Um, I'm interested to see the um, the DLCs that they come out with this. <coughs> a lot of people were saying that we could go to was it Kalos, the uh, French region, because of course, well, you know, this one's set in Spain, and of course, Pokemon X and Y was set in France, and you know, the Pokemon world they're also touching, like in the real world. Um, the yeah, uh, DLC will be interesting. I really actually love the designs of the new Pokemon in this generation. So, um, yeah, really excited for the uh, Scarlet and Violet trading card uh, expansions to come out. Um, Gotta be really excited to open some of them. And they've finally given us silver borders. Yes! Finally, the yellow borders are nowhere near as good as the Japanese silver borders. So I'm so happy for that change. So happy. Uh, okay, so in third place we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Do, 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 do. Uh, I think this is like the first time in ages that I've rated a Call of Duty this highly. And really, it really is one of the best Call of Duties I've ever played. The last Call of Duty I bought was Cold War, which was, yeah, it was fun, but it, it wasn't anything exceptional. But Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 does feel like a big step up. The maps are good, the gunplay is good, the camo grind is fun, the campaign is really good. Um, yeah, everything about this game I just think just works so well, and it's good that they're giving it another year to work on, so they're skipping next year for Call of Duty, which just gives them more time to give us content for Modern Warfare 2. So, really, if you're going to get any Call of Duty in recent years, that's my stomach, you might as well get Modern Warfare 2, because you're going to get the most bang for your buck from this game. So, yeah, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, just really fun multiplayer goodness, really. Um, and in second place, which is very fitting, we have Overwatch 2. Overwatch 2 for second place. Overwatch 2 for second place. Um, Overwatch 2. I mean, Overwatch. Um, the top three games of all time. It would be like Elden Ring, Breath of the Wild, and then Overwatch. Um, I've never felt so connected and engrossed by a game that I have with Overwatch multiplayer. That is... It's like the first game that I've properly tried to get good at, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I, you know, I, I keep on holding on to the fact that I got a diamond for like two seasons, which is pretty much nothing. Um, <laughs> by one trick in Zarya, and I'll never let that die because it's my biggest game and accomplishment. And it's only diamond, which is not the biggest accomplishment, but for me, someone who's pretty much literally average across all video games I'm always in the average rank always it felt good to finally be above average in something <laughs> in video games that is um, the Overwatch 2 I think just expands on the Overwatch formula to its best the 5v5 works 
100 times better than 6v6. The character reworks are fun, they're exciting, the maps are really, really, really good, and I'm just really excited for the future of Overwatch and to see where it does go. Uh, I've already seen people talk about how Overwatch 2 is dying, just, just let it do its thing, let it do its thing, and of course we still have PvE to come out, which I think is going to be really fun, so I cannot wait to see more about that. And finally, first place, I think we all know what's going to be first, that is Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, what a breathtaking masterpiece, and I don't need, I don't use that word lightly, what an absolute masterpiece. seen the reactions to that video is fun you know trying to pronounce different words and language 
languages as bad as I may sound you know it's fun at the end of the day and this may sound stupid but it was a big feat and accomplishment for me that video because I think it was my first sponsor that I ever got I think that video Ace My New Language was I can know, actually know it was my second sponsorship but I got a sponsorship around the same time literally within like the same week it was Rage Shadow Legends <laughs> and I literally joke with like my mates and I'm saying you know you've made it if you've done a Raid Shadow Legends <laughs> sponsorship so there you go that was a big big feat for me uh, and up next is uh, the next video with the sponsorship which is fastest ASMR one minute role plays and so this was my first proper sponsorship with NordVPN um, and yeah it was I love doing the one minute collections of shorts you guys always always ask for more and more shorts so I really do need to get on making the shorts content but yeah it's really fun it's sort of great in these quick fast paced scenarios like shop like doing all these different shops um, like repairing you it's just fun to do and uh, yeah uh, for like fast as as well one minute role plays sixth place in fifth place we have the g fuel taste testing video the uh, one that i did back in may i did a recent one a couple of weeks ago but i prefer the one that i did uh towards the start of the year and g fuel was actually lucky enough to send me out some products to do for that video so shout out to them um and yeah i've just it seems to be one of my favourites ever since I've done it, really. I don't know why it is, it's just, I guess it's too far. I really do like drinking g Fuel. So, I get, I guess I get, I got to like drink like a nine or so products that I'm trying. And yeah, it was just fun, it was a fun video to do. It was a, took quite a lot to um, set up though. So, yeah, again, that's my stomach rumbling. Up next, I think is probably the biggest surprise on here for a lot of people probably. And that is Let's Play Stardew Valley game i love this video um i love board games i love stardew valley the board game and i think the video turned out so incredibly well um with me just sort of playing the board game you know going explaining my thought process it's something that i really do like watching personally in ace mob videos of someone playing a game or playing a board game of them explaining their thought process i really enjoy that so i you know that's why i think i enjoyed making this video i i don't watch my videos but my god i i've watched that video <laughs> like yeah it's very strange for an ace artist to watch her own videos but yeah i have watched that one all the way through because i really really do enjoy it uh, and in third place we have a smart cranial nerve examination um i don't know something about this video that felt really good to make and put out and see the reception from it people will seem to really really like this one um i know i do typically do a lot more like high like hygiene like doctor type sort of role plays but it does seem to be what people really do enjoy and come to my channel for and i think the cranial nerve examination is kind of the best of them really uh, i know a lot of people may probably say like face examination um but i yeah i personally prefer cranial nerve cranial nerve video and yeah can't wait to do more sort of doctor clinical 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 role plays okay so second place i think the last two videos are kind of kind of obvious but second place is asmr in the world's quietest room it definitely one of my most unique videos uh, unfortunately i wasn't the first one to do this uh obviously asmr did this video many 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 years ago but i was lucky enough to be invited by someone that i know george emming check out his channel he did a video with me actually so check out george emming's video about asmr he invited me to the world's quietest room to make a video and you know he said hey why don't you get a video out of this as well for your own channel so i thought great idea um, i'm sure people would love this um it's, i know it sounds strange but i i already knew it was going to be a video that would blow up but sometimes as a youtuber you get you just know a video is going to blow up and this was one of them i just kind of knew it would and i'm so happy it did i'm so happy people did enjoy it i loved going to london for the day going there you know doing something very different for the day for the channel and i kind of want to do more stuff like that i just I guess i have to find the right sort of things to go to and do videos on but yeah i would love to do more videos like this
to somewhere uh, spend the day with me which is like my latest in person vlog you guys seem to really enjoy that uh, it was quite hectic and chaotic to put together I thought I wouldn't actually even be able to put out that video but luckily I did and a smart reading you to sleep on Christmas Eve now this could just be recency bias but I think that video turned out really well uh, I've not done a lot of reading ASMR I think I've literally done like one other reading ASMR and I don't know I've always fit like the theme of Christmas really well you know you, you know when you're getting be like read to sleep sometimes before I don't know I just thought it felt all cozy feel good calming I really enjoyed it so um yeah uh, ASMR reading you to sleep on Christmas Eve however number one Let's get the uh, let's get things. 